Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Time for the Group 1 $12 million Dubai World Cup. We're going a mile and a quarter. Race number nine at Maidan on Saturday. Approximate post time, 1230 here on the East Coast in the United States. Let's take a look at this field. You're going to notice that the program numbers are a little out of order. We're taking this in post position order. And Mike, the best dirt horse in the world is the number seven. Life is good. He breaks from the rail. We know he likes to go to the front. Two questions for you. Can anyone in this field step with him early? And are you concerned about the mile and a quarter? Um, no and no will be my answer to those two questions. They can't go with him early, Dan. He'll, if he breaks from the gate, um, fine, from the rail. He's going to be on the lead in here. You know, obviously the mile and a quarter is the big question. Um at this point, it's hard to be concerned that he that he won't get it. Um, but I guess if you feel like he's not going to be able to see out the distance, he could be beaten here. Faces several American-based horses in here. Hot Rod Charlie has been in Dubai for a while. He won a prep race there. Of course, you've got Country Grammar, the close second in the Saudi Cup Midnight Bourbon. It's a solid field overall, but we have to start with Life is Good. Again, the number seven, post position one. He's four to five on the morning line, and that sounds about right. Life is good. Life's been awesome for this Todd Pletcher train colt in his last three starts. Hasn't been headed in any one of them. And last time out in the Pegasus World Cup, a race we're going to take a look at. Up his first start at four, he had to go a mile and an eighth. He was too fast for them early. He was too fast for them late. 110 buyer speed figure. This is brilliance, Mike. Yeah, it was really good in here. This was supposed to be, you know, that uh, that big matchup between he and Nick's go. Um, and as it turns out, it was no contest at all. He outran that horse to the lead and he never looked back. And you can see here through the stretch, Dan, it's just, it's not even close in here. He just aired on this field um, in a really impressive performance. Again, you know, now he's got to stretch out a little bit further. Um, I think it's fair to say that, you know, even for somebody like me, who wasn't a big Knicks Go fan, um, this might even be a little bit of a, an easier spot. He doesn't have to face that horse in here. Um, I have a lot of respect for Hot Rod Charlie, um, who I think can turn out to be a really good horse. I just don't see how they're going to be able to beat Life is Good if he shows up. Life is Good does have that tendency to drift out a little bit in the stretch. We saw that at the end of the Pegasus World Cup. Is that something that you can even factor into your handicapping? Or are you just going to say, that's him. It hasn't really plagued him much throughout his career. And even if he does it, he could still win. Yeah, you could worry about it, I feel like, if he did it for the first time in the Pegasus World Cup there, and he only did it a little bit. Um, he's been doing that um, right from the start, Dan, and he didn't even really drift that badly last time. I don't know. I, I, feel, I feel like at this point, you just have to sort of get, get past it. That's just him. Post position two, number one, Aero Trem, this horse bred in Brazil. I wouldn't argue with anyone that would use this horse maybe underneath at a price. He was fifth in the Saudi Cup. It was his first start of the year. The Saudi Cup, of course, at a mile and an eighth. This horse seems to be a true mile and a quarter horse. And if life is good, burns off the pace pressers, maybe this horse could complete your exacta or try at a nice price. Yeah, that's how I looked at him too, Dan. Um, he's hard to use on top. Um, you know, his Saudi Cup wasn't a total disaster. It was no factor in there um, in a race that set up well for closers. Um, but he ran fine in that race, and the added, added ground here could really help him. The number two is Chua Wizard, post position three. And Chua Wizard was second in this race last year behind a good American horse, Mystic Guide. Now, last year, he also ran on the Saudi Cup. He did not seem to handle that race course. They decided to stay at home to prep for Dubai. And he scored in the Kawasaki Kinen, a race he was supposed to win on paper. Yeah, he was a big favorite in that race. Um, two back in that big group one there. Um, he was no match for Teo Keynes, uh, who came back in the Saudi Cup and was awful in that race. But I don't feel like that sort of means anything when you're trying to evaluate Chua Wizard. Um, who would you say? He ran pretty well in this race last year. It's a tougher spot um, this year. Um, but listen, he ran fine in this race. And I feel like he's a horse you could make some kind of case for.
Next in the gate is the German bred, the number four Grocer Jack, and these horses are tough to like. Grocer Jack's going to have no problem with the distance. He has never raced on dirt in his career, however, Mike. you got to think he's going to take a lot of kickback in the early part of this race. And you look at his pedigree, just all turf. Yeah, it's all turf. Um, so they're going to take a shot at a big purse here and just see what happens. The problem, Dan, is he's not bred to be better on dirt, which he has to be. I mean, he's a good turf horse, but he's not a top-class turf horse, and he's got to be a top-class horse to beat this field. Country Grammar finished ahead of four of these rivals in the nine furlong Saudi Cup. It's the race we're going to take a look at right now. He got a really nice trip in this race. He was saving ground in the pocket. He got to the outside, turning into the stretch. He's going to put the speed away. He's going to put Midnight Bourbon away. He just can't hold off a million to one shot at the end of this race. Now, it was his first start off of a lengthy layoff. I'd like to say maybe he was a bit short, but something tells me Baffert had him cranked to the gills. Yeah, I think he probably was cranked in this race, but he still ran really well. I mean, let's not take anything away from this horse. He had, you know, run uh, improved races in his first two starts for, for Baffert early last year. Unfortunately for him, um, he had to endure a long layoff, and he came back and he ran first time back. Um, the mile and a quarter is not supposed to be a problem for this horse. I suspect he's going to be competitive right back. Real world, also from uh, Japan, uh, bred, bred in Ireland, pardon me. Group two winner in Dubai, two starts back, but on turf. They ran him in the Saudi Cup. He didn't do much. He just seems like a turf horse to me. Yeah, I don't like any of his dirt races. Um, you know, and obviously he didn't run well last time in the Saudi Cup. I mean, I guess, you know, it's Godolphin and, and uh, Ben Saror. So I guess you would just look at him and say he'll probably run better back home here in this race, but he still hasn't won a dirt race that's going to make him competitive in here. Hot Rod Charlie is the number five, three to one on the morning line for a very consistent and good North American based runner. Trained by Doug O'Neill, O'Neill decided to take him over to Dubai early, prepped him in this race, the Al Maktoum Challenge round two at a mile and three sixteenths. And there's really not much to see here, Mike. He basically hooked up with this horse early. There's no closing going on. And he's simply better than the horse to his outside. I don't think we learned anything about Hot Rod Charlie from this race other than he likes the Maidan surface. He's come back in good form. Yeah, that's how I looked at it, too. I mean, this isn't, you know, the most impressive win in the world. He is going to eventually leave that horse behind. And there's nothing happening behind those two horses in here. He, he ran fine. And it's just a prep race, which, you know, I guess is how you're supposed to look at it. Um, you know, I guess the only problem I have with him, Dan, it, maybe it's twofold, actually. I think he likes to be forward in his races, and um, he's not going to get the lead from life as good in this spot. Um, I didn't look at I didn't love his Breeders' Cup. You know, I, I realized that there's a way to excuse those some of those performances in that race. I didn't think he ran great that day. And I didn't like his San Antonio either. So I don't know. I'm still a huge fan of this horse. I, I don't really want to bet him in here. What kind of trip do you think they're going to be hoping to get with Hot Rod Charlie? Because I think you made a very good point. Some of his best races have come when he's really out there on the lead or pushing the pace. It's not going to happen unless something disastrous happens to life is good. Is he hoping that Midnight Bourbon maybe tries to push? Is he hoping that Hypothetical, the horse from Dubai, tries to push and try to tuck into the second flight? I mean, he's just got to get forward in this race. And, I, you know, I feel like it's just going to be up to Pratt to decide when he's going to go after life is good. I, I really didn't see anybody, you know, go and trying to duel life is good early in this race. Um, but I do think Hot Rod Charlie will be close to him. And at some point, Pratt's going to have to decide to take a shot at him and see what happens. Midnight Bourbon, the number nine. He's 10 to one on the morning line. Jose Ortiz takes the mountain list. And he's been a consistent horse for the majority of his career. 13 of 15 on the board. But let's be honest. He's been nibbling now for a very, very long time. We saw him have a big look at it in the Saudi Cup. Country Grammar turned him away. And talk about horses that like to be forwardly placed. His best races are when they're on the lead. Good luck. Yeah, he can't do it that way. Listen, I, I will say, I'll give him credit. They took him to the Saudi Cup last time. They tried to do it a different way in there. They took him back. They raided him behind horses. Um, he got a good trip. He came clear in the stretch, and he had dead aim. And once again, he just could not get by. So listen, not being on the lead in here, I don't think it's necessarily going to make that much of a difference. But how can you, um, you know, want to bet this horse on top anymore at this point, Dan? I mean, unless he's just going to be some kind of big price and, and maybe he will be. I don't know.
Up next is the number eight, Magni Coeur, a Godolphin homebred trained by Andre Fab. This horse ran really well in this race last year, finishing third behind Mystic Guide and Chua Wizard. He did not perform up to snuff in the Saudi Cup. It was his first race of the year. Some of those, some of these horses just don't seem to handle that surface. It's completely different than Maidan. Maybe we get an improved performance. Yeah, I, that's how I looked at him too. I mean, he's another one of those go dolphin horses coming home now, second off the layoff. Um, he didn't run well last time. I suspect he'll run better here. Um, does an effort, you know, like the one he put forth in this race last year, does that get him anything against this field? I guess it might. I'm not sure about that. He's going to need a lot of help, I think, from her. This looks like a tougher field simply because you've got yeah, life is good and you've got Hot Rod Charlie in here. But maybe this pace falls apart and he can get a piece again, if not something more. Hypothetical is up next. He's the number six in this race. This horse is very sharp. And he likes Dubai. And he showed last time out that he could stretch his speed to a mile and a quarter. He was fourth in this race last year. Let's watch his most recent performance, the round three of the Al Maktoum Challenge. And Hypothetical has found a new running style in his last two races. He has gotten himself on the lead, and he's been able to stretch his speed. Again, in a situation where you've got life is good breaking all the way to his inside, it's hard to imagine Hypothetical working out this trip. But he's game here. Yeah, he is. He he got a, a really good trip and ride it. He managed to clear once they got into the back stretch, and he just sort of controlled the action from there. He's very game to hold off um, this horse, Remorse, who's also back in this field. He's just much the best in this race. Um, I know we got the mile and a quarter here, Dan. I still don't think it's his best distance. I think that's a fair point, and I tend to agree with you because Remorse is up next, a next-door neighbor of Hypothetical in this spot. And just look at Remorse's record, and then you just watch that race, and you begin to wonder if Remorse really has that fire in his belly that he wants to beat you eight times, second from 13 starts. He had every chance at Hypothetical in the stretch. Yeah, yeah, he set a perfect trick on that race, right behind that horse on the rail, came clear, and just wasn't good enough to get the job done. Um, I guess the difference between the two of them, I mean, if you're just trying to decide between hypothetical and remorse, I mean, I guess remorse just sits it out this time and maybe catches more pace to run at. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Dubai World Cup. Life is good as way the horse to beat. Hot Rod Charlie's starting to grow on me a little bit, Mike. I like the effort in Dubai as a prep. I like that his lead changes were a little bit smoother. I'm curious to see if life is good can go a mile and a quarter. He's just simply been brilliant. He's odds on. He is way the horse to beat. I'm looking forward to seeing him run no matter what. Yeah. Uh, me too. I just want to watch it, Dan. I don't want to bet it. Um, I have no interest in betting against life is good here. I hope he shows up and, and shows that he can get this kind of distance. I'm Hot Rod Charlie's biggest fan. I just don't want to bet him against life is good. You got country grammar in there, maybe splitting them for the exact. Is 7359 for Mike, 5736 for me. It's the Dubai World Cup on Dubai World Cup Saturday. Good luck.